Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, thank you very much for attending uh, our uh, presentation. So uh, today I would like to uh, talk about very uh, interesting uh, technology, which is IFWS2 uh, particles, new generation tanks and disulfide particles in a in a greases. Uh, to improve uh, tribological performance points and create potentially create high performance grease with uh, minimal amount of components. And to do that, uh, we've been using combination of uh, IFWs to particles and uh, naphthenic oils. So during this uh, presentation, we're going to be uh, discussing several variations of oils and how they uh, interact with each other and the uh, synergy between them. Uh, so uh, you probably uh, know and follow uh, recent development and recent um, uh, uh, technical specifications for high performance grease that been produced by NLGI. And uh, you can see that the new high performance grease uh, specs are uh, quite demanding and uh, we believe that uh, this technology and today's uh, presentation going to open the door to achieve and uh, exceed those specifications uh, with, uh, with uh, very small amount of the componentry to be used there, which is covering both points, technical as well as commercial. So we're going to be talking today about the base oil that has been used in this um, uh, test and study. Uh, we were working on lithium complex greases and they characterized uh, IFWS2, novel uh, tungsten disulfide particles, and regular molybdenum disulfide particles, which is from the uh, same family of materials but, uh, uh, but, um, but has molybdenum versus tungsten as a metal part. And uh, there are many uh, test results that you would uh, uh, hopefully find very useful. Uh, <clears throat> so the purpose of this work, as I mentioned already, is to produce high performance grease uh, at uh, uh, lower cost and, uh, and, and, and then achieve high performance with a minimal amount of components in them. So the base oil classifications is uh, shown on this uh, slide. So uh, basically paraffinic oils from group one to group three and the polyalpha olefin from group four and group five naphthenic oils. So in this study, we've been uh, working with all uh, this group of oils and we got very interesting uh, results. So we did uh, six combinations of oils. Uh, so base oil, one that we used uh, to uh, produce grease, it was a uh, naphthenic oil, uh, we call it naphthenic A, with viscosity 700 center stocks at 40, uh, with a flash point to 20, with a poor point minus 15, and sulfur content is shown here as well. So we used uh, for base oil two, we used uh, naphthenic B, which is uh, with a slightly different uh, specs you can see on this table. Then base oil three is a combination of naphthenic B plus paraffinic group two. Um, and then base oil four, same naphthenic B plus PEO. So you can see that poor point is getting better. Uh, with uh, Base oil 5 combination is, is the same naphthenic B plus group 1 paraffinic, and base oil combination 6 is naphthenic C plus PAO. So, in total, we've created six uh, lithium complex greases as a base greases, uh, which have uh, been produced. Uh, <coughs> we, uh, the complexing agent we used it was azelaic acid. Uh, no additives used at this stage, so it's purely a base salt. So here is the characteristics of uh, neat base lithium complex grease that we uh, uh, we we created. So grease uh, one uh, is a combination of base oil one. It uh, all of the grease has been created there on LGI two, uh, and the thickener contact. This is a very interesting uh, point here. You can see the thickener contact 
with naphthenic oils is much smaller than when we use a combination of different oils. So right here, you can see the saving point um, uh, in, in production. And the flow pressure minus 20 is, uh, uh, is pretty, uh, pretty good for all, uh, and within the standards uh, for this type of greases. So now we're going to go to a comparison of uh, molybdenum disulfide versus spherical particles of tungsten disulfide. Uh, and the spherical particles of tungsten disulfide, they're prepared in the form of dispersion and molybdenum disulfide being used in a powder form. And there is a, a reason for that. Uh, we synthesize IFWs to uh, particles ourselves, and uh, they're in a sub-micron size. They're spherical in shape. And when we synthesize the powder, particles agglomerate it, and it's quite large in size. So we need to deagglomerate them, and we can do that only in a liquid phase, uh, because it's practically... Uh, I don't want to say impossible, but practically impossible uh, to achieve uh, deagglomeration of uh, particles to the primary particle sites in powder form. That's why we're using liquid form, and it's much easier to deal with uh, for for customers um, because it's a it's a liquid uh, solution, so there's no airborne material there. It's much easier to disperse through the grease and uh, other uh, industrial applications. So. Uh, we can we showing powder versus liquid, but in all study the content of the salt is the same. So the dispersion of FWS2 is quite high in content of uh, spherical particles of tungsten disulfide is 50 percent. And then we diluted it, but but you will see that all the data is um, with the same content of solids. So now, uh, when we're comparing the conventional solid like molybdenum disulfide versus tungsten disulfide spherical particles, uh, there are lots of benefits. And um, because the regular molybdenum disulfide or regular even tungsten disulfide is it has platelet shape, uh, it primarily uh, helps with reduction of friction in a high uh, heavy duty applications. But due to due to its flat uh, shape, it doesn't absorb the shock. R rather than tungsten disulfide in spherical shape, they absorb the shock because the particles are onion type structure. They're spherical with a hollow core with a multi layers, uh, many layers, about 25 layers, and they absorb the shock when there is a shock in the system. This is very unique, th unique thing about this material, and it's very important for many industrial and heavy duty applications. The treat rate is significantly lower, needed, required treat rate is significantly lower compared to regular molybdenum And you can see uh, 3 to 8 percent, we can achieve similar results at 0.1 to 2 percent, depending on the application. Uh, and many applications are more cost effective. Even. So, uh, tungsten disulfide spherical particles are shown uh, on this uh, uh, micrograph here on the, on the left um, bottom corner. So you can see it's a hollow core, multi-layer structure. You can peel off the layer, and by peeling off the layers, you're reducing your friction and creating tribal films, which pr pr protect from wear. Uh, and uh, and you want to create more and more of this tribal film, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very important uh, for getting better, uh, uh, better anti-wear properties in, and more tri tribal film in a system. So now what is... It, very unique about material because it's semi-spherical or spherical so that they can rotate and they can reduce friction by rotation as well but what is very important is uh, it, it withstands extreme pressure and extreme loads and extreme shocks this is uh this is very uh unique mechanism for this material so um they play a role of a cushion basically and they don't transfer the shock uh, to the metal and we see the micro uh, result is, is, is extremely good for this material for many gear applications and applications where the shock uh, uh, exists, which is most of the industrial applications in any way. So uh, here are the uh, pictures of all the greases uh, mixed with molybdenum sulfide and tungsten disulfide spherical particles. 
Uh, IFWs to solids were used uh, were diluted from 50% to 25% uh, in concentration. Um, and all samples were prepared by mixing in homogenizing in a speed mixer that's shown on the right side. You can see that with the same concentration of the solids, with IFWs2, the grease is lighter, so it's not black or gray, it's more greenish gray. So uh, in this case, uh, this grease, even if it has the same content of, uh, of solids, it can be, uh, uh, can, the color can be added. So it can be red, it can be green, uh, and so on. So we uh, started with measuring the flow pressure measurements uh, following the standard DIN 51805. And uh, we noticed that uh, uh, the first grease, uh, both with molydisulfide and uh, inorganic fullerene like tungsten disulfide, um, uh, the, the, the flow pressure properties for first grease are uh, quite different from the base grease. The rest, uh, and they we're still f figuring out why that, but uh, both uh, solids affected with this type of naphtenic oil, naphtenic oil A, it was used for grease one. Uh, we have this uh, uh, this interesting result. Uh, the rest of the uh, of the greases they pretty much uh, were uh, similar on a flow pressure. On a rheological measurement uh, uh, of the greases, uh, we noticed that uh, linear viscoelastic region for molydisulfide was shorter than for uh, for IFWs to base particles, which is very good for uh, for grease and uh, and mechanical properties. So EP characteristics that's a very interesting uh, data we obtained here. So you can see that. Um, that base grease, which is in green, and 0.25% of particles, IFWs to particles, uh, it increased to one load stage. Uh, same amount of molydisulfide didn't affect at all. And 1% uh, of IFWs to, again, didn't increase further the EP characteristics for first grease. And 1% of molydisulfide also didn't improve even from the very beginning. Of, of the from the base base grease. However, for the grease number two, where we use naphtenic uh, oil type B, we got very interesting results. So again, we see a similar results for IFWs2 at 0.25 percent. We're getting one load stage. There is no improvement with molydisulfide, but with one percent of IFWs2, we're getting a really significant improvement, up to 620 kilogram for it. On AP, and again, one percent of molydisulfide didn't uh, do anything uh, in this grease. Uh, with the other combination of greases, grease three, four, and five and six, uh, we see only improvement on extreme pressure uh, at, uh, at at treat rate of one percent of IFW in those greases, um, and we got a significant improvement to three hundred fifteen kilogram force. We didn't see any improvement with 0.25 IFWs2, neither with uh, 0.25 or 1% of molybdenum disulfide. So on uh, uh, anti-wear properties, we can see there is a very significant improvement on anti-wear properties with IFWs2. So we getting up to 50% reduction of wear with, uh, with both 0.25 and 1% of IFWs2. With molybdenum we see increase in wear uh, and that's probably due to high speed uh, rotation uh, uh, and uh, not enough uh, time for uh, molydisulfide to generate the tribofilms and exfoliate, which is the main mechanism for friction reduction with molydisulfide. Uh, so it's very interesting results here, very promising. So on average, we see between 30 to 50 percent reduction in wear. Friction characteristics you can see on this table. Uh, there's um, uh, both molydisulfide and tungsten disulfide uh, somewhat reduce uh, friction in those greases. So you can see in some greases there are more effect of IFWs2 in some uh, very similar with molydisulfide. 
but overall we see the reduction in, in friction. This is the result is a, is a summary uh, uh, of all the results um, that, that I presented. And uh, <clears throat> uh, and I already described all of them pretty much, but as a summary is, is shown here again, I would like to uh, pay attention that uh, uh, that sample uh, number 20, which has grease number two is naphthenic oil B. With 1% of IFWS2, we got uh, uh, okay reduction in friction, but very significant reduction in wear and very significant extreme pressure properties. So we got from 250 kilogram force to 620 kilogram force. Which opens the door, as, I, as we mentioned, this opens the door to um, production and formulation of the heavy duty greases at, uh, um, at lower content of the expensive components is number one. And, uh, uh, and what is extremely important, naphthenic oil that as we see, helps to reduce the content of soap significantly as well, which is another uh, very important uh, point for reduction of the cost. So uh, high viscosity naphthenic oils with high degree of solvency, which is naphthenic A and B oil, uh, both have been used in lithium complex grease and uh, they resulted to low thickener content, which is a very important point, as I mentioned, and uh, excellent tribological performance when combined with IFWs to particles. Um, the other blends of high viscosity uh, naphthenic oil, uh, naphthenic B with other oils, paraffinic as well as the PEO, uh, with PEO it improved yield and the low temperature mobility of the lithium complex grease significantly. And uh, uh, and another uh, uh, point that that I have used to particles with naphthenic oil B, a combination, we see that high synergy between these two components and uh, that opens uh, a possibility to, you to, to get a very high performance grease at a very low treat rate and, uh, and to reduce the cost. So that's where the definition and the title of the, uh, of the presentation comes from, uh, which is less is actually more. Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, uh, to li for listening this uh, presentation. Hope uh, to hear uh, questions and uh, ready to answer. Thank you very much.